Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. All right, we are back with another episode, Bite Size Business Advice. And this one I'm I'm jacked up for because this is something that I have dabbled in, I guess you could say, but I didn't know I didn't know it was a real thing. I didn't know there was someone out there who could help me and you with this. So before we dive into what we're talking about, James Foster, first and foremost, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks, man. I super appreciate it. It's yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I gave you a little tease there. The topic of the episode is how to do profitable collabs and licensing agreements. And James, there's a bajillion and a half questions I have to ask you. We have <laughs> 20 minutes, so I'm going to try to cram them all in. But first it. and foremost, can you, because this this was a one of the questions I asked you before we started recording is what is the difference between a collab or a licensing agreement and an affiliate agreement, which I think is a very key distinction. So let's start there and then we'll dive deeper. Yeah, good call. So an affiliate situation is generally, not always, but a lot of times it's going to be short term and money focused, right? Somebody comes in, they're going to send an email, maybe they'll send a week's of promos, maybe it's for a launch, and they're in, they make their money, they make their sales, and they're on to the next thing. That's pretty typical for affiliates. Whereas licensing deals, or setting up like a profitable collab, as I like to call it, you're you're more focused on folk you're more focused on solving a problem so say you are a coach who works with traffic you teach people how to get traffic to a website right maybe that's your thing maybe you're good at driving traffic but you might not be great at say writing sales copy or converting that traffic you focus all on driving traffic so i might come in and I might help you set up a collab with someone who handles copy, who teaches how to write copy. So now you can either include that in your course so your customers have um, a more complete experience or it might become an upsell or you might edit into your mastermind kind of thing. So the whole focus for a licensing agreement is going to be longer term and you're trying to solve people's problems as opposed to a one off, make, a few, make some money and move on to the next thing. Yeah, I, I love that uh, differentiation for a number of reasons. First and foremost, you can definitely tell from a consumer's perspective when somebody is all about the money and when somebody is all about the solution. So I think first and foremost, whichever side of that you identify with, that's up to you. I know where I stand. I am all about customer solution um, and customer focus. James, I can I can feel you're on that side as well. <laughs> Um, so we're going to stay there today, but <laughs> I, I love this model because one of the things that always frustrated me when I was growing my last business before I sold it was mm -hmm. I would go to find a solution to a problem I had. So mm -hmm. sales copy, for example, or traffic to a lead page. And then the next problem would come up and I was left to find the solution to that problem too. And the solution that ended up happening was what I call the duct tape business which is not effective for anybody because things could easily fall apart at any time and everything's all over the place. In this model, what you're saying is you want to proactively, or this is what I'm hearing at least, you want to proactively solve any other problems your customers may have by partnering with reputable businesses and service providers so that they have a great experience. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, man. No, absolutely. So yeah, you do one thing and you you have your customer or client's best best opinions or you know what they want at heart so you're going to go out or hopefully they come to you but you set up some kind of situation with the best possible teacher of that thing that you're not doing so like we're talking traffic for that conversion specialist so yeah exactly you're trying to make kind of a whole solution that is going to be in the best benefits of everybody Hmm. That's so awesome. I, and this is why I love this conversation because this is, to me, this is how you win in business. When you build trust and you can help the customer solve problems, th those two things in combination are going to get you, propel your business farther and faster than 
anything else, I would I would argue that point for hours. So James, where do we where do we start with this? Let's say someone's listening, they have whether it's an online or an offline business, they solve one specific problem, but they need to they've heard an an, an additional tangential problem, if you will, that they don't solve, but they need to find somebody who does. How do you start developing that relationship? So that can be easy or complicated. It kind of depends on what sides you're on. Um, there's it's a super old and kind of nerdy term for it. It's called near naturally existing economic relationships. Very, very businessy way of saying exactly what we're talking about. We're looking for people who have who are going to benefit. We want to find other solutions that are benefit that benefit our clients as well. So just like we're talking about. If you have, say your core offer is, here's a good story for you, Legos. So Lego, when they started out, all they did was sell bricks, right? And they were like, here's our bricks, build whatever you want with it. I think of that a lot of like SaaS companies today. They're like, here's all the things our SaaS does, do with it what you will. That, that did well and Lego did well for years through that. But after about 30 years, that's when they started coming out with the kits. That's when they started out bringing out, here's how you build a car. Here's how you build a castle. And of course, then the licensing with Marvel and DC and all that kind of thing. So say you are a coach or a SaaS and you have a specific kind of core offer, right? What are the things that your SaaS can do that maybe you don't totally teach them how to do? If say you have a cold outreach SaaS and you send cold emails, well, people might be using that for a lot of different reasons, right? In fact, I know how you could use that to send warm emails and that's a whole different thing. So you might go out and license another course. Say, if your, course, say your SaaS is $50, $100 a month, right? You might go work with somebody who has a $50 info product. You might get the license to that course and you might sell that course because you know everyone who buys that course is of course is going to be a good customer is going to need your software or your coaching to really get the best of that front end course. So you're going to go into them, say, Hey, course creator, how about I give you a whole bunch of new buyers? You just let me take your course. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to keep all the money and then it's going to upsell into my, my product, but you're going to get all the buyers. Plus you still have your course. You can keep selling it. I'm just also going to sell it. And now we're, you're going to get a whole lot more exposure because I'm going to bring you to all these markets, specifically markets that you're probably not in. Plus you're going to get all the customers and it's going to win for both of us because I, it's beneficial for me because I have now people who are really going to be interested in using my software on the back end. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that, that came to my mind though, as you were talking, a fantastic example when you're creating these relationships or, or trying to create the relationships, um, and this happened to me actually a number of months ago, trying to create one where I had wanted to approach a company, but I ended up not because they were so much bigger and had more customers than I had. I could not figure out the value that would be equally, like an equally exchanged value proposition. So when you're targeting partners, potential partners, how do you make sure, like, how do you teach your clients to come with the right value so that it's mutually beneficial for both parties? And you're not like, you don't want to be seen as a, as a sucker fish, right? And just trying to like tag on and hope they pull you along. For sure. And I might challenge you a little bit. You know, I don't know. I didn't Please know your do. whole situation there with that story, but it's very possible that even though you were what you think of was a smaller fish, maybe you were in a market that they hadn't tapped yet. So you could have been their entry point and that could have been wildly valuable to them, even though it doesn't seem like your size was anywhere near theirs. If you're in a market that they haven't gotten into or want to get into, but don't, don't know how exactly yet, or maybe their cost per acquisition is too high because they're just super broad, like that SaaS we were talking about your product. If it was, you know, solving a problem for someone in a specific market, could have been exactly what they wanted and they could have taken it and then blown you up because of that. So it's kind of, it's, it, I really try not to think of it as a big fish, little fish situation. It's really about the problem you're solving. So if you have a very specific 
I like to think of it as clearly different and desirable. So way to fix, solve a problem that another company doesn't have. It makes sense to work with you because you're doing something different and desirable, which also leaves the opportunity that they could work with you. They could work with someone else. They could work with a third person. And none of you are overlapping because you're all doing different things. So you can all benefit from working together in a profitable collab, as I keep saying. Yeah. So. So I'm stupid. Is that what I just heard you say that I made? No, it no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you just have it. You don't always know that the other. You don't always know the benefits to the other company. So I try to think of it in a terms that there is probably a bigger, a bigger, a bigger benefit to them than we realize. Or else, so worst case scenario, you reached out, nothing happens. But if you reach out and they message you back that they're interested, you know you have something right? They might not say it. They may make you feel like you're the smaller one, but they wouldn't be talking to you if there wasn't something there, right? So yeah. you're, you're not, you're not normally as small as you think you are. If you have a solution to a problem, like there's value in that. There are all kinds of places like people don't even see that there are value. Um, I had a client who working in, they bought and sold physical land, raw land, right? They had processes that they went out and bought it and sold it. I just talked to a guy who was doing the same kind of thing, but he had this great SOP, standard operating procedure of how he hired people, how those, those people he hired went out and made sure the land was good before we ever, before they ever bought it or anything like that. It was a great process that made him tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars. He gave it to me because he saw no value in the steps of how that worked. He sees the value in the land, maybe in the marketing, but the processes, which were incredibly valuable to me and my client, because we just plugged them in and now we had the same system. He saw no value in that. So there are lots of things that there is all kinds of value and tangential relationships in that we don't see it. It's obvious to us. It doesn't seem like a big deal to us. It might even be sawdust to us, but to us, but to other companies, it has a lot of value. And I like to call, I like to think of those as like problem solving assets, which all businesses have like all kinds of them. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. You're talking to an operations specialist. So that, that to me is like, <laughs> I see there. See yeah. That. yeah. But the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And in that scenario, mm -hmm. they just didn't know what they had and they didn't know it had value. I love that example. Um, so uh, real quick, I want to put your, your website on the screen here, because I think you have a really cool community where people can go and, um, and learn how to how to do this kind of stuff. So uh, it's on the screen there. If you're listening, it will be in the show notes. But can you just talk about that a little bit and and why people should join your community? Yeah, royaltyrockstars.com. And it's a community for the people we're talking about. Experts, coaches, people who have, or even processes. If you own a business and you've figured out some processes in your business, it's a community of people who have assets that they want to license out. And again, we're talking licensing, not affiliates. So if you just have affiliate, this problem, you just have a product that you want to that you want to sell, it's probably not a good fit. This is going to be people who solve problems and they want to get another another um, income streams that's not that they're not into. So you can go in there if you have some IP, um, a course, a book, video set, something that you've created. You can put you can talk about it with people in there you can find people who will license it from you. So either they can sell it to their people or a lot of them, they might even go out and sell it for, for you as kind of like an agent and go out and find other places to put it in for, you know, a cut of the profit or something like that. So yeah, it's a community where people can go in, put their courses, talk to other people who can either license their courses or help them license their courses. So that's royaltyrockstars.com. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely check out that community because this is such an, untapped frontier i think and i i i know i want to explore it more we've been doing it a little bit like i said i think i mentioned that before we started recording but now i want to kind of dive in because i'm going to use this as free consulting and you can send me an invoice after that's totally fine but for you the listener at all for you man. like definitely apply this to your situation because this is this is really really interesting in terms of getting in front of new audiences. And what I love about it most, again, from experience before we even dive in here, is that audience trusts you because they trust the person who's representing you. So you, they are immediately, I, I don't want this to be considered or taken the wrong way, but they're warm leads. 
don't call people leads. Mm -hmm. That's very mean, but it's a warm audience who is receptive to your message. So the question is, okay, so we do operations. We have a proprietary business model that really focuses on having companies work less and get more out. So that's the oversimplified version. Who we love to partner with would be uh, CFOs, CMOs, other fractional C-suite executives. How would I go about approaching some of these people and what are some things I would say to them to start that conversation? Yeah, so opening conversations and and we're super high level here. So I'm not totally yeah. sure exactly what you're, what exactly we'd be selling. We want to figure out what their problems are, right? What are their hot, bot, hot buttons? What are you gonna come in and say, hey, do you, do you ever have this problem? They're just gonna be like, yes, what? Yes, I have that problem, and you're just gonna you're just gonna say to them, yeah. I a, a lot of our clients are. What are you doing to fix that? They'll either have a solution, maybe they maybe they're doing something now, and you can say, yeah, how's that working? In which case, if it's a problem, they're gonna tell you that it's not working, or they're gonna say, no, I don't know, and you're gonna talk to them more. You're gonna find out. You're gonna dive deeper, right? You're gonna figure out how long it's been a problem. Why is it such a problem with them? And once you really understand why why it's an issue from them, then hey, you know what? I have a I have an idea. You know, I have this product. Now, yours might be a little different in that it might be probably a monthly or a upfront fee. A lot of the stuff I deal with is going to be um, royalties or retain or on rev share. So that's a that's a pretty easy sell if they don't have to pay anything up front. So that might be a little different than your situation. But yeah, it all starts with the problem that they have. And that's normally just a great place to start the conversation. Hey, are you, do you have this problem? Have, are your people having this problem? Do you have this problem? That's what normally works for me. Yeah, I was going to clarify that. So is it the problem that that company has or the problem that their clients most often have that we know we could solve or both? So yeah, it's of course going to depend on the type of problem. If you are, if your business solves a problem for their clients, you want to focus on the problems their clients have hmm. because their because, because if it's good for their clients, it's likely going to make them money, right? So by working oh. with you, it's going to make them more money. There was a guy who focused solely on um, helping hair salons make more money, right? He was at, he, he wasn't doing, he was, he was doing all right. He wasn't doing great in business. He went to a hair salon expo convention kind of thing. He just so happened to run into the CEO of Revlon and was talking about talking about business. And as soon as they both realized what each other did, they realized all the hair care, all these hair products are going into the salons. This guy helps the salon sell more, which means they're going to sell more Revlon products. And it was obvious how they could help each other. So normally it's just about explaining how you're going to help the customer. And in a lot of cases, it'll become pretty obvious how everybody's going to benefit from it. You see, you, you did it again. You just, you just made me feel stupid, James, because you, <laughs> and, and you did it on purpose. And I know you did because <laughs> you said, or I said, I felt like a little fish. You're talking about someone who was doing okay in business, talking to the CEO of Revlon. And there was a mutually beneficial agreement that could have been made out of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm getting from this is, well, more importantly, digging deeper into that answer, which thank you, by the way, that was a brilliant answer is if you can solve a problem that someone else is having, it doesn't cost them money and it actually makes them money because of this agreement. It doesn't matter how big or small you are, how big or small your audience is because everybody's winning, including the client, which makes both of you as the service providers look amazing. That's, that's, and that's probably, and see, you probably just gave your, gave me the better answer. The real reason, the real way to make this work is to approach it as not being a service provider, you're not coming in there looking to, to you're not looking to cost them any money. Yeah. You're looking to bring them more money. And that kind of, that approach is more likely to open doors than probably anything else in business. Yeah, it's funny. People rarely say no to those opportunities. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Oh man, then we're even. I gave you something, you gave me something. I guess you don't Absolutely. have to send me an invoice, but you still can. <laughs> Awesome. Well, James, this was a phenomenal interview. Thank you again. The The website is on the screen. It'll be in the show notes, royaltyrockstars.com. Go check out the community. Um, James, I'm excited to dive in. Thank you for coming. Any, any last advice that people have to know from you before 
before they dive into this cold, first of all, go to the community. But after that, like, what would be something you have to know before you start down this path? Dude, it is surprisingly easy. Like we're talking that if you have a problem that you can solve and you approach it, like we're talking how you can make them make them more money. It's it's surprisingly easy conversation. Who Every company, that's their whole focus. They want to make more money. So if you can do it without costing them any, and if you can make them look good doing it, like we're talking about, it's the conversations happen easier than you think. If not, you can reach out to me and maybe I can help you. That depends on the situation in the industry, but it's it's easier than you think. It just takes a, a little legwork, some cold emails maybe. It's not that bad at all. So if you got a, if you got a good course and you can help people, absolutely, you can make it. You can do it. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. And like I said, the, the cold emails that say, I want to help you make money. It's not going to cost you any money. Can we have a five minute conversation? Usually those get open worded yeah. a little bit differently, but <laughs> right. it's kind of an easy sales pitch because you're not selling. I love that selling without selling. Exactly. All right, James, thank you again for coming and thank you for listening. Wherever you're listening or watching, please make sure you subscribe. We do this show for you and let us know in the comments, what did you think and what action are you going to take more importantly after listening to this episode that you did not already do in your business. Hopefully you go try to make one of these partnerships. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go jump in the community. And then I'm also going to send more of those emails and stop thinking of myself as a little fish. But James, thank you. And thank you for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.